How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look back at last night's Premier League game. Liverpool against Burnley. Some say this was a surprise. Some say it was expected. Uh, last piece of news involves Arsenal and we're going to take a look at all the players that Arsenal have sold in recent years and not received a penny for them. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is the Premier League game last night. Liverpool against Burnley and implications at both ends of the table because Burnley won this game 1-0 and they have ended Liverpool's incredible home record without defeat and it's been a number of years and um, it's staggering when you think about Liverpool's form right now. No goals in four games. I genuinely never expected this to happen um, to Liverpool and what is going on with them at the moment. We all know about the injuries that they've been facing and they've been trying to deal with. Uh, but that's been largely with, you know, defenders. What they have, you know, been able to keep there is Salah, Mane, Firmino, the attacking players, the ones that scored so many goals over the last couple of years. But this is the first time I'm now seeing this real, real dip in form. And it's costing them big time. I don't think they can even be worrying about a title chase right now. It's more about worrying, of, you know, getting form and scoring goals again. And... Also, their neighbours, Everton, and I'll go into the league table in a moment, but Ashley Barnes scored with a penalty seven minutes to go. And I just don't know what's happening with Liverpool right now. A month ago, they were favourites for the Premier League. They're seven points clear of Arsenal. And I keep using Arsenal as a reference because obviously I'm an Arsenal fan. We've had a horrendous season. But we're seven points behind the champions. And a team that a month ago were going to win the Premier League. Wow. Just crazy. And I keep saying it so many times about this season and how mad it's been. But it is just genuinely staggering. Now, when I look at the stats of this game, <laughs> my word... It just um, shows that um, possession does not win you football matches. Liverpool had 71.9% of possession. They had 27 shots on goal in comparison to Burnley 6. But this is the big problem. They only had 6 on target. Um, 11 block shots, 85.7% passing. Uh, 12 corners, Burnley had none. <laughs> Absolutely mad. Two yellow cards for them, one for Burnley. Um, I just find it absolutely staggering. And you look at Liverpool's results, okay? Take away the FA Cup game, um, which they won against Aston Villa's youth team. Um, which was understandable. In the Premier League, their last five games, they scored one goal, and that was a home draw against West Brom. They drew 0-0 away at Newcastle. They lost 1-0 at Southampton. They drew 0-0 against Manchester United. And they lost 1-0 to Burnley. So... You're looking at that, three draws, two defeats in their last five games. Wow. Three points out of a possible 15. And that's why they're not going to be challenging for the title with that kind of form. That is just staggering beyond all belief. Um, and what does it do to the Premier League table? Well, I'll tell you what it does. Um... Liverpool 
sit in fourth place on 34 points. Um, Tottenham are fifth with a game in hand on 33. Now this is the one that I was mentioning earlier, their rivals, their neighbours, Everton. They have two games in hand, they're two points behind. If they go and deal with those two games in hand, then they could go four points clear of Liverpool. Long way to go, don't get me wrong, there's still 19 games to go. We are literally at the halfway mark. But so far, it's just not great at all. Uh, West Ham in seventh on 32. Um, Chelsea on 29 points. Southampton have a game in hand on 29 points. Arsenal on 27 points. Um, and then Aston Villa on 26, but they have three games in hand. Um, so I'm looking at Aston Villa. And if they win their three games in hand, they can go above Liverpool. Absolutely staggering. And at the other end of the table, what does that result do? Um, Burnley are now on 19 points, seven points clear of the relegation zone. And they do have a game in hand um, on a lot of those teams in front of them. Um, Newcastle also on 18 points. Brighton have dropped down to fourth bottom now, playing 19 games. Of course, Fulham, they do have a game in hand um, on Brighton. And they're five points behind, so they're going to need to win that game in hand uh, to stay within touching distance because you're starting to see that gap develop now. Uh, West Brom... 11 points, they're still in and amongst it. They can still get out of it. Sheffield United, for me, they're gone. Unless an absolute miracle happens, they're done and dusted. They're on five points. And I just can't see them, you know, swinging that amount of points deficit around um, at all. 12 points, they've got a swing round to Brighton. That's, yeah, it's difficult. That's four games. They've won one all season. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting. And um, some people will think that that was a, a big surprise. And some people, some Liverpool fans, uh, will think that um, it was expected because they've been that poor lately. I didn't expect that, to be honest with you. I know that Liverpool have not been firing, but honestly, I thought they would win that game. But just shows how crazy this season is. Um uh, Last piece of news involves Arsenal and um, of course all the talk over the last week has been players getting released from Arsenal, the likes of Meza Ozil, um, Socrates um, and it's raised the question um, about all the players that Arsenal have released um, over recent years and they've not received a penny back for those players and when you look at the amount of money spent and the fact that they've recouped nothing, it's actually staggering. And it only reiterates the point that many of us have been trying to make for a long time. And that is past regimes made such a mess that we're still trying to repair that now. You know, when you look at Socrates and Meza Ozil, you know, they're all part of the past that we're trying to now get out of the way. And it's absolutely staggering. And um, we'll go through some of the names. But um, they reckon around about £160 million worth of talent has left for nothing. Just unbelievable. Now, I suppose the big name that uh, we didn't get any kind of money for um, and we got absolutely mugged off in the swap deal but then at the same time, so did they, would be Alexis Sanchez. This is a player that we could have sold for around about 50, 60 million pound before the season had started. And we eventually went and sold him in January. Um, but uh, three spells, um, three seasons, sorry, at Arsenal, um, scoring 25, 17 and 30 mad when you think where he played predominantly out on the wing he was unreal I love the guy I hate how he left and I hate he went to Manchester United but he was unreal 
him and Meza Ozil at a point were just pff, staggering. Absolutely staggering. Um, of course, Meza Ozil cost the club £42 million. And um, one thing I suppose you can say is you've got seven and a half years out of him, or probably five and a bit, given that he hasn't done too much over the last couple of years, or last year especially. Um, so that's money, you know, down the toilet. Aaron Ramsey, that's one there. Um, now, he only cost the club £5 million. He was at Arsenal for 11 seasons, um, played 369 games, um, but he went for free. Completely forgot about that one. Santi Cazorla, uh, signed for £10 million. Now, this one I can understand in some respects because he had that injury and there was talk that he you know, might not even walk properly again, let alone play football and... You know, we all saw the images of the skin grafts that he had to have from his arms onto his leg. And it was just horrific. Um, so I can understand why he wasn't given a new contract and, you know, it was dealt with and done and whatever. But, yeah, that's another one when you look at it and think, you know what, he could have probably got a couple of years out of him easily um, as it transpired. Socrates, yeah, there's another one. Um, 18 million pounds spent and very quickly um, gone for nothing. Um, we didn't even try and sell him, I don't think, or whatever it might be. We just ended up, you know, having to cut the contract and, uh, yeah, Mustafi. <laughs> 35 million pounds. Oh, my dear Lord. Danny Welbeck, 16 million pounds. Jack Wilshere, injuries again. That's what ruined him. Mkhitaryan had to uh, cut his contract just to get him off the books as well. Again, past regimes where um, we're having to, you know, sort out the mess. And that's why I'm happy with things at the moment in this present regime under Mikel Arteta because Bukayo Saka signs a new contract. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang signs a new contract. Martinelli signs a new contract. Emil Smith Rowe is about to sign a new contract. We're tying down these players and making sure that these things does not happen again. So if somebody wants Emil Smith Rowe, Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, yeah, you're going to have to pay for it big time. So um, yeah, we're doing all the right things in that respect because when you look at that list of names, that is absolutely staggering. Ridiculous. But it is what it is, as they say. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. Um, later on today, you can get the preview uh, for tomorrow's FA Cup game against Southampton. I'm looking forward to that one. Team lineup is going to be very interesting. Um, of course, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. And I will see you lots soon. I'm out of here.